where the next talk will be given by Yuki Takeuchi, who will be talking about rewindable quantum computing. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. I'm Yuki Yu Takeuchi from NTT Communication Science Laboratories in Japan. Um, yeah, this was, oh, sorry, this was, can you hear me? <coughs> Uh, this work is a joint work with uh, Ryo Hiromasa from Mitsubishi Electric Corporation, uh, Akihiro Mizutani from University of Toyama, uh, and uh, Seichiro Tani from NTT Corporation. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to explain our motivations. Uh, we have two motivations. The first one is to examine the plausibility of quantum mechanics by using computational complexity theory. As one of my favorite researchers, uh, Scott Aronson examined the plausibility of the famous Bolland's rule. Uh, as you all know, the Bolland's rule states that a probability of obtaining the measurement outcome Z can be written by uh, the square of the absolute value of the inner product between measurement outcome Z and uh, measured quantum state Psi. Um, what happens if uh, the value of this exponent uh, is not two. Uh, Scott Aronson showed that if it is the case, then uh, any problem in PP can be solved in quantum polynomial time. Uh, roughly speaking, PP is a set of uh, decision problems that can be uh, solved by counting the uh, number of solutions of uh, some optimal, uh, optimization problem. Um, from this result, we can say that if we, we believe that quantum computers are not too weak to solve any problem in PP, uh, this Bolland's rule seems to be plausible. Uh, we would like to do the similar thing for the irreversibility of quantum measurements. Um, it is uh, believed that uh, quantum measurements are not reversible in general, and uh, yeah, we also believe, believe it. Um, how much uh, plausible this, uh, is this belief? Uh, we show that if uh, quantum measurements are rewindable, then any problem in BPP to PP can be solved in quantum polynomial time by using a polynomial number of rewindable quantum measurements. Uh, since uh, BP, uh, it is believed that BPP to PP is wider than PP, our result uh, shows the plausibility of the irreversibility of quantum measurements. Um, this, our result is also related to our second motivation. Uh, the second motivation is to consider what happens if any process of quantum computation can be classically simulated efficiently. If it is the case, any quantum process should become reversible. This is because uh, classical computation can be made reversible by using um, Toffoli gate. So in this case, uh, quantum measurements also become uh, reversible. So our first result also uh, examines the uh, uh, impossibility of this strong notion of classical simulatability of quantum computation. As other results, we also show the equivalence between these three um, unphysical quantum processes, uh, rewindable quantum measurement, cloning of quantum states, and adaptive post-selection. Here, the post-selection is the ability of obtaining desired measurement outcomes. And uh, here, adaptive means uh, the post-selection can depend on previous measurement outcomes. Um, for instance, uh, let me consider this quantum circuit. Uh, this uh, blue box represents a post-selection. The bit value of this post-selection uh, depends on the previous measurement outcome A. We call this type of uh, post-selection adaptive post-selection. 
Um, in the first and the second result, uh, we considered universal quantum co computation with a polynomial number of dividable quantum measurements. Uh, on the other hand, in the third and the fourth result, uh, we consider non-universal quantum circuits or uh, single dividable quantum measurement. Uh, in the third result, uh, we consider the uh, impossibility of a single dividable quantum measurement. We show that under the assumption that the learning with errors problem is hard for universal quantum computers or BQP is not in uh, statistical, statistical zero knowledge, uh, there exist problems that can be solved with a, a single dividable quantum measurement but cannot be efficiently solved without uh, dividable quantum measurement. And uh, uh, this LW problem is a, a basis uh, of the security of post post-quantum uh, cryptography, so uh, our assumption seems to be plausible. Uh, the fourth result, uh, uh, in the fourth result we consider uh, non-universal quantum circuits. Uh, first we consider uh, Clifford circuits. Uh, they are a famous example of quantum circuits that can be uh, simulated in classical polynomial time we show that even if a polynomial number of dividable quantum measurements are allowed in Clifford circuits, uh, they are still classically simulatable efficiently. Uh, we also consider instantaneous quantum polynomial time circuits. Uh, they are a subuniversal quantum computing model, and um, uh, it has been shown that uh, their output probability distribution cannot be classically simulated under a plausible uh, complexity theoretic assumption. Uh, we show that uh, instantaneous uh, quantum polynomial time circuits with a polynomial number of dividable quantum measurements is equivalent to a universal quantum circuits with a polynomial number of dividable quantum measurements, uh, as with the case of post selection. Uh, in the remaining of uh, this talk, I would like to uh, show you the proof idea of our second result. Um, as I mentioned earlier, our second result is uh, equivalence between these three uh, unphysical processes. Uh, to show this equivalence, uh, we define these three uh, quantum complexity classes and show shows that they are equivalent. Uh, here, uh, uh, yeah. um, RWBQ, uh, they are uh, sets of decision problems uh, that can be solved uh, by using a polynomial size uh, quantum circuit with a polynomial number of rewindable quantum measurements, uh, cloning of quantum states, and adaptive post selections respectively. And this equality uh, says that uh, these three, oh sorry, um, these three uh, unphysical processes uh, give the same computational power to quantum computation. In this sense, uh, we say uh, these three processes are equivalent. And to show this uh, equality, we show these three inclusion uh, relations. And uh, this, the first and second inclusion relations are trivial by the definition. So uh, in this talk, I would like to explain the uh, uh, proof idea of uh, this uh, third inclusion. Uh, to this end, first, I would like to explain the more formal uh, definition of dividable quantum measurements. Uh, to introduce dividable quantum measurements, uh, I would like to define this uh, dividing process uh, more mathematically. Uh, 
Uh, for simplicity, uh, let me consider this quantum circuit and this uh, quantum state Q get to zero n. Uh, this quantum operation Q includes uh, unitary quantum gates and intermediate quantum measurement. Then uh, we measure the first qubit of uh, this quantum circuit in the computational basis or policy basis, and we obtain this quantum circuit. Uh, now, uh, our, ta uh, go target, uh, our goal is to rewind this quantum state, uh, this uh, post-measurement quantum state to pre-measurement quantum state. Uh, to, uh, to model this process, uh, yeah, this pro rewinding process can be modeled by this uh, operation. Uh, this rewinding operator receives the post uh, measurement quantum state and output the pre measurement quantum state. Uh, this uh, definition seems to be natural, but uh, this definition is not well defined. Uh, this is because output is not unique. Uh, for instance, when the uh, measurement outcome is zero, uh, these, these two quantum states, zero, zero and the uh, bell state, uh, becomes the same state, zero, zero, after the a measurement of the first qubit. Uh, this simple example shows that uh, the uh, pre-measurement quantum state is, uh, cannot be decided from the uh, post-measurement quantum state in general. To avoid this problem, uh, we also input the description of quantum operator Q. Uh, here, D is a, a description. This uh, description is a bit of string that represents, the, represents how to construct the quantum operator Q. So uh, it represents uh, which quantum gates is applied to which, uh, which qubit or uh, which qubit is measured in the computational basis and so on. Uh, thank, thanks to this description, uh, a pre-measurement quantum state is uniquely determined. Uh, in our talk, um, rewindable quantum measurements means that uh, this uh, rewinding operator can be applied in uh, can, can be applied efficiently or in one step. Uh, by using this uh, rewinding operator, uh, we define uh, new complexity classes. Uh, to this end, uh, before uh, we introduce it. Um, I introduce a basic uh, quantum complexity class BQP. It is, uh, roughly speaking, it is a set of decision problems uh, that can be solved in quantum polynomial time. Uh, more concretely, if a yes instance is given, a quantum computer outputs yes or one with probability at least two over three. On the other hand, if a no instance is given, a quantum computer outputs yes or one with probability at most one over three. Um, BQP with rewinding, uh, RWBQP is the same as BQP except for that a polynomial number of rewinding operators uh, can be allowed in quantum computation. Uh, BQP with adaptive post-selection, other post-BQP is all, uh, also similarly uh, defined by replacing uh, dividing operators with adaptive post-selections. Then uh, we show, yeah, um, in the rest of this talk, I would like to show uh, this inclusion. Add post-BQP is in RWBQP. Uh, to this end, it is sufficient to show that uh, post-selection can be efficiently simulated by using a polynomial number of dividing operators. Uh, to this end, we devise the mitigation protocol. It is a method of exponentially mitigating the amplitude of non-target states by using a polynomial number of rewinding operators. In other words, by using a polynomial number of rewinding operators, we can increase the amplitude of uh, target states uh, exponentially close to a constant value. 
Okay, now I explain the procedure of this uh, mitigation protocol. First, uh, the initial state is given like this, and uh, psi t is a target state to be uh, post-selected, and psi t pub is a non-target state. And in the worst case, the amplitude of the target state is exponentially small. Then uh, we add the uh, single ancillary qubit ket plus and apply the controlled Hadamard gate. As a result, we obtain this uh, entangled quantum state. Now uh, here, um, this qubit is used as a, a controlled qubit and this um, ans additional ancillary qubit is used as a, as a target qubit. Then uh, we measure the ancillary qubit in the computational basis. Uh, if we obtain the outcome zero, uh, we obtain this quantum state. As an important point, the amplitude of the non-target state becomes smaller compared with the initial state. So the mitigation uh, succeeds in this case. On the other hand, uh, yeah, so yeah, this is because the inner product between zero and plus is uh, one over square uh, root of two. So yeah, this part is mitigated. Uh, on the other hand, if the measurement outcome is one, we obtain non-target states, so the mitigation is failed. But now we can use uh, rewinding operators. So by applying the rewinding operator to this uh, non-target state, we can obtain this entangled state again. So we can try to this quantum measurement again. And uh, as an important point, the probability of obtaining the measurement outcome one in this measurement is uh, P0 over two, which is at most one over half. So by, pulling, uh, by repeating uh, the measurement and, and uh, uh, ap application of dividing operators, at most a polynomial number of, polynomial number of times, uh, we can obtain the measurement outcome zero at least once uh, with uh, a probability exponentially close to one. So in total, in this uh, one repetition, uh, we can uh, mitigate the uh, amplitude of uh, non-target states by the factor of uh, square root of two. So then next, uh, we use this uh, output state of the first repetition as the initial state of the second repetition. And by doing the similar procedure again and again, after this number of repetitions, uh, we obtain this quantum state. And um, now, since we set the value of m as this value, so this quantum state is almost equal to uh, the superposition of non-target state and target state with equal amplitude. So yeah, finally, by measuring this quantum state, uh, we can obtain the uh, target state uh, with uh, probability one over half. On the other hand, if we obtain the measurement outcome zero, uh, we obtain non-target state, but by applying the dividing operator to this state, uh, we can obtain this quantum state again, so we can try to uh, measure this quantum state. <laughs> and uh, yeah, finally, uh, this slide is uh, our conclusion, and uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, our, our outer. Yeah, thank you for your kind attention.
Uh, hi. Uh, can, can we use uh, the rewinding operator to achieve uh, the perfect completeness of the EQP? Um, no, in, in our definition of um, Um, in, yeah, in our definition of RWBQP, we do not require the perfect completeness. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi. <clears throat> uh, so in, your, in, in the abstract of the talk, you also say that you proved that post BQP is equivalent to only allowing post selections on Lashing lens to have a polynomial probability of occurring, but that is a consequence of your result. Uh, I was wondering if you could say a little bit more about that. Oh, sorry, please say again. Um, so in your abstract, it uh, says that you proved that post BQP is equivalent <laughs> to only allowing post selections on measurements that are like polynomially away from occurring at probability one, so that you don't have to consider events with exponentially small probabilities? Oh, sorry. Ah, uh, yes, sorry, I cannot hear. Uh, please. It's something about so you don't have to consider events with exponentially small probability when you're post-selecting. Mm -hmm. well, I guess the question is why, why is that? Why, why, do you, why can you ignore events with exponentially small probability when you're selecting? Oh, why, oh, why do I consider the exponentially small probability in post-selection? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, um, yeah, so. Yeah, so, so I guess this is, a, this is here is like a reduction from post BQP into RWBQP. And then I guess this would follow from the other inclusion, which maybe I missed that inclusion. Oh, yeah. RWBQP is also included in any other post BQP. And uh, yeah, in the definition of other post BQP, we allow the uh, post selection of exponentially, exponentially small probability. So, uh, so yeah, we consider uh, the post selection of exponentially small uh, probability in the proof. Uh, I'll ask you first. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, what are the best upper bounds on on this class? Oh, um, best upper bound is uh, p space. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh yeah, um, I missed to yeah list the upper bound, but yeah, I showed uh, these three classes uh, upper bounded by p space, but uh, yeah, BPP to PP and p space is not tight, so yeah, our upper bound is uh, seems to be not tight. Yeah. Okay, if there are no more questions, let's thank our speaker again.